So I had a little bit of a back and forth with Zed Shaw on Twitter about Mirage. Zed is an author and a programmer I really admire. And he was uh, looking at a Mirage and saying, you know, why would I use it if it turns out that it's just as much code as, you know, using Polka, something like that, to just write a real node server? And what he really wanted was to be able to do something kind of as simple as this one liner right here, right at the top of a JavaScript file. And so I just wanted to make a quick video showing that you can do exactly that with Mirage. So here I have a React app running, and right now, you know, we're just using some local data here to set some state. So if I were working on this for real, you know, maybe this is where we would make our network request. So maybe we want to fetch API to do's and then get the JSON out of here. And then from that result, let's go ahead and set to do's to json.todos. And we'll comment this out right here. And so here we're seeing our React app make a network request and hitting an error because you know we don't have any API server running. So we can just uh, right up here at the top of the file, import server from Mirage.js. And we're just going to create a new server. And so now we're getting some feedback from Mirage, which says, you know, this route is not mocked out. So right here, uh, we can come back and say server.get slash API slash to do's should respond with an object that looks like this. And so now uh, our app is kind of in a functional state because Mirage is handling that with a 200 response and with this data right here. And we can see our app shows that nothing's done here. So if we were to go ahead and grab this dummy data and put it up here, now we see that the data is coming over Mirage and we even have a little bit of latency right there. So this is kind of absolutely the simplest way to get started with Mirage. And you know, this is really the workflow that I use when I use a tool and people who have been using the tool for a while. Uh, I like that I can stay in my front end code base. You know, I don't happen to be a node API developer. Most of my APIs are written in Rails. And so um, switching over to a, a Ruby environment and running that process, there's just a little bit more friction there. And uh, this is kind of the fastest way I find to, to iterate on my UI code. And so now that we have Mirage here and our app is actually making a real network request, we can see, you know, there's a little bit of latency. We could come up here and say, uh, let's make this a second. Now we see this kind of second delay while the, the server responds. So we can go ahead and set our is loading state to true right here. And we have a little loading screen. And then in our callback, we'll go ahead and set is loading to false. So again, we're just getting feedback here, real world feedback about what our UI is going to look like when it's interacting with the network. And, you know, one more, we can just go ahead and implement this. When we hit enter here, we see that we have this submit handler. Right now we're just logging this out, but we could go ahead and make a fetch request, API to do's, and we'll say method is post, and the body is going to be json.stringify a new object, and we can just send over text of new to do text, because that's, that's the state where we're keeping that. And so again, if we come over here and try a new to do and hit enter, Mirage is going to tell us we need to mock out that post request. So we can come right back up here, server.post, API to do's. And now, you know, we could just return kind of an empty object here. Test, hit enter. And we'll see that uh, Mirage defaults to 201 created. But we probably want to respond with some of the data from the request. So we can also pass a function in here. And this function takes in a schema and a request object. And so maybe we want to return, you know, the new data, maybe with some new ID. You know, we have one, two, three here. We can just put four here just, you know, to keep us moving. And we want the text from the request here. And so this is another thing I like about Mirage is that if we want to see how we want to build this, you know, quick little mock, we can just drop a debugger in here. Come here, type in test and hit enter. And, you know, we're going to be using the same dev tools that we're used to using 
Um, we're used to dropping debuggers and logs kind of in our React code. And because this is right alongside of it, we don't have to figure out how to use a debugger in a node process or in a separate terminal or anything like that. It's all just running in the same front end code here. So now we can just poke at this uh, fake request object right here and it has a request body. So we can go ahead and json.parse that. And that's gonna kind of give us uh, some adders. So maybe we would want to do let adders equals this, adders.id equals four, and then go ahead and return the adders from the route handler. So now that we have the API mock, when we come here and hit test, we see we get you know a new response. And so we can finish out our UI code. So dot then, we'll go ahead and get the JSON from this fetch response. And then with that response, we can go ahead and clear the new to do text. And we can also update our client side array of to do's here. This is going to be the existing to do's as well as our newly created one. So now if I come here and try to make a new to do of learn Mirage and I hit enter, there we see we have kind of the network request is mocked, the list is updated, and you know, we're writing real code that's uh, kind of ready for a production API. And of course, um, now that this is working, uh, if you were to implement the backend API or get it from your team, you can just come here and delete all this. And uh, now you have code that you are confident in that's ready to talk to an API. And um, you can test it against a real API server. You can also use this code and just bring it into a test if you wanted to write a test uh, that just operated at the boundaries in your UI code. So that's another option. Um, or you could move it to a central place, which is kind of how the Mirage Quick Start shows you to do because what's nice about having this code in the front end is that anyone else who works on your project will get kind of this high fidelity version of the app just by running you know, npm install and uh, yarn start or, or whatever. They don't have to learn how to configure or set up a backend environment. They don't have to set up a database. It's kind of like a stateless server that lives alongside your front end code. And um, again, just is the goal is really to just reduce the friction for front end developers who are comfortable working with front end code and the dev tools to be able to get higher fidelity feedback on the networking code that they write. So just wanted to make that quick video. And even though, you know, there are a lot of pieces to Mirage and a lot of folks do end up using some of the conventions to put it in a centralized place, you can absolutely use it like this. And if you're going to be doing stuff like this, I would still use Mirage, even though it has all the other pieces because it's just, um, it's just this easy to get going with it.